innovation from the Puget Sound from the eyes of the World Citizen Essay Award winners from the World Affairs Council tonight on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert. This is going to be so much fun because we're going to learn an awful lot and at the same point in time we're going to be greatly enthused about the future. Sometimes people my age worry about the future. No, not with this bunch, that's for sure. Elena, Kendall, Zenwar, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, this is the time where you guys get to talk now, so you have to respond to me. Uh, but first off, it's from the World Affairs Council, so it's world-affairs.org. You're going to want to be sure to go to that website uh, often to learn an awful lot more. Okay, World Citizen Essay. What, first off, uh, Zenwar, what school are you from? I'm from Sam High School. And your full name is? Zanwar Faraj. Okay. Kendall? I am from Bryant Elementary. Mm -hmm. And your full name is? Kendall Barton. Okay. And you're in the, just finished up the? I just finished up fifth grade. Okay. Elena? Um, I'm from Kamaikan Junior High. Um, Elena Plenifish, and I just finished the ninth grade. Okay. Good deal. Let's go to the first graphic about the World Citizen Essay Contest. This was the challenge that you guys had. And from, again, the World Affairs Council of world-affairs.org, let's go to the question that you had to answer. It says, looking back over the past 60 years, please identify a Puget Sound-based innovation that has left its mark around the world. Explain why and how this innovation had an impact beyond the United States, and this impact can be related to the arts, sports, music, popular culture, technology, civic action, global health, education, manufacturing, etc. Big thing for you guys to consider, huh? Okay, Elena, let's start with you. Elena Plenifish, Kamaikan Junior High School, Grade 9, Healthcare to Go. What's that? Um, well, I wrote about uh, port portable ultrasound machines. So normal ultrasound machines are these big, heavy things. So um, this company that I wrote about, Sonosite, took it and condensed it down into something about the size of a laptop so it can be packed up and taken just about anywhere. Well, let's actually go to the picture of it, Sonosite, uh, the, the Sonosite website, and then Right after that, you can actually see the picture of one of the units itself. Uh, what interested you about this? Uh, well, my mom used to work there, so just sort of gave me a push in the in that direction. And then I thought, you know, it would be a unique topic to write about since it's a relatively small company. All right, I'm reading from your essay. You said because of its portability, ruggedness, and relative low cost or lower cost. Hand-carried ultrasound allows that very useful technology to be brought to impoverished communities in the harshest and least accessible regions. Why does that matter to you about bringing this type of technology to, uh, you know, a, a region in poverty? Because everybody has a right to health care, and in this way, that everybody can access that right. Because some people, just because of their location, might not have, um, they might not be able to get the uh, huge, bulky normal size ultrasound up there to give them their health care but with the um, with the portable one they can stick in the backpack hike up there and and then uh, bring that health care that everyone deserves to them. What did you um, what did you understand an ultrasound was was for why was it necessary for people in poverty? Well it's uh, it's used as a diagnostic tool for a lot of things um, the main one that it's known for is uh, um, images of babies in utero and uh, that's really important because they can determine if it's going to be a difficult birth or something like that. They can get the mother to the hospital, whereas she would normally be birthing at home. And, and then they use it just for um, looking, they use it for guiding needles, for anesthetics and stuff like that. And they use it for uh, looking at soft tissue in the body. And it's not, it doesn't use ionizing radiation, so it's a lot safer than, say, a CAT scan or an um, X-ray. So it, uh, yeah, it's used for diagnostic purposes. Is this the kind of stuff usually. that you normally study in the ninth grade? Because I want to go over to your school. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, um, I've had some experience with this kind of stuff myself. It's a long story. Okay. One final question with regard to this. You revealed in your uh, essay that the project was funded by the Sonocyte uh, had its project funded with its portable ultrasound by DARPA. Mm -hmm. which is the uh, Defense Advanced Research Project uh, Agency, which, you know, you look at that stuff and all of a sudden I think Darth Vader's coming along. <laughs> what did you think when you saw that? Well, I wasn't really sure, but I did some digging, and it's, um, it's this agency that provides grants to companies that they, that to make um, technology that the military wants, but that civilians can use. So 
this was originally developed for the military so they could take the diagnostic properties to the soldiers on the battlefield, but then they also wanted it to be um, available to the community so that it was it had a broader spectrum. Okay. Thank you, Elena. Kendall, is was your project uh, funded by DARPA too? No, not that I'm <laughs> aware of. I don't think so. So what did you do? I did mine on Theo Chocolate, which is a little chocolate company, and they are the only organic and fair for life certified chocolate company in the U.S. Okay, let's go to their website, theochocolate.com, and uh, and also you can be a Theonista yourself. Theonistas unite. What is a Theonista? I think that it's just someone who really is excited about Theo Chocolate. <laughs> Why did you pick Theo Chocolate? Well, I had a number of ideas, but they all seem to be really huge, really well-known innovations, and I kind of wanted to do something that wasn't as well-known, but was still making a difference. Okay. Here's a quote from your essay. You say, Theo Chocolate has impacted the world by making conditions better for the farmers. What kind of farmers are you talking about? Well, I'm, well in that, I'm talking about the cow farmers. And not all places are really even know where they're getting their cow. And, and that's where chocolate comes from, right? Exactly. And so, but Theo Chocolate does know, and they are Fair for Life certified. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Let's talk about that because I'd never heard of Fair for Life. I've heard of Fair Trade, but I hadn't heard of Fair for Life. What, uh, in generally, what is Fair for Life? Well, Fair for Life is actually very similar to Fair Trade, but it's slightly different. It's got um, auditors that go around and they look at both the cocoa farms, well, in this case, and also the factory, and they they make sure that everything is really fair and that the farmers are getting what they need to, and they're getting fair wages. Oh, I see. Okay, so let's actually, we're going to go to something uh, about what Fair for Life is. It says it's a new fair trade certification. It only certifies the farmer groups we, and they're talking about themselves there, we uh, work with. Uh, but our entire supply chain, including Theo's factory and our overall business practices, this groundbreaking program ensures through third-party verification that all of our farmer relationships, business, and trading practices are equitable, responsible, and truly fair trade. Just curious, before this, did you know what a supply chain was? No, not really. I mean, I kind of, I hadn't really heard the phrase before. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, entering into the essay contest, what did you learn? Well, I learned a lot, like, before I, well, I'd gone on a tour for my sister's birthday, but, but for this, I got to, like, look into it even more. Mm -hmm. Would, and I so I just learned a lot about how Theo works. And uh, when you when you went there, did you uh, get some free chocolate? Well, actually, they sent me a little box of um, a bunch of different kinds of chocolate. And you brought some for us tonight, right? No, it's at oh, home. Oh man! Well, with that, we're just going to finish with you for now. We're going on to to Zanwar, Zanwar Farage from Sammamish High School, the new era of commerce. Yep. That's a big thing. Yeah, when um, when I looked at the prompt and I saw it talking about innovations, immediately I thought about internet because that's for me the biggest innovation there is. And uh, I had idea of Amazon because before really online shopping, you just had to get in your car, go to the department store, but now you can just type in a web address and you can buy everything you want from home. Well, actually, I, there was something that was in your essay, and I went and looked it up. It was f a study that was done by Nielsen. Right. And, of course, Nielsen, as everybody knows from watching television, has, has now expanded. And it's this right here, that 85% of all of the online community purchased an item using e-commerce, and this was in 2008. Right. Yeah. That, that's amazing. When you read that, you, did you, like, shake your head and say, that can't be true? Uh, at first, I was pretty surprised. 85 is a large number, but... Um, it kind of makes sense because I know I've bought things online and my friends and my sister and my brother have all bought things online and just so much more convenient to buy online than go to a regular store that uh, it's not, it's kind of easy to understand why it's such a large number. 
uh, something from your essay. You said, when exploring the international impact of Amazon, we must first understand how this site transformed the way we shop. How did it? Well, um, as I mentioned before, earlier you had to just get in your car, drive to the department store, and that wastes gas, wastes time, uh, time you could be spending doing other things. And when you, when you do online shopping, it's much easier. Everything is right there, and you don't have um, the sensory overload that they have in normal stores where just too much stuff to take in, and you just search what you want and buy it there. So I thought that was huge, a huge innovation. What kind of stuff do you buy? Uh, well, and before you say anything, know your dad's out there. So All right, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, mostly technology, um, an iPod, some other things. It's you can really buy whatever you want and small purchases too. And something else, I, for. something I, that I wanted to ask you, um, and I I went on Amazon site just to you know in preparation for the show, and of course it's it's automatic. My cookies are already enabled, and so. There, there it is, and then kind of blow it up. It's already said hello to me, and they have recommendations for me. Is that okay with you? That if you go on to their site, they've already know what you want. Well, some people might not like it, but I think it's really helpful because uh, you don't have to constantly search for uh, for new things when uh, the computer-generated uh, engine already knows exactly what type of things you're interested in and so it makes it a lot easier uh, doesn't waste as much time and it's I think it's very helpful okay. thank you Zemmar. now what we're gonna do is I wanna talk about enable you guys to talk about what you learned uh, in general from the competition and what maybe you learned from others let's say Elena for example uh, and just hearing what Zenwar had to say about Amazon was that something that was new to you or is it just something that you it was automatic to you or what does e-commerce mean to you? I don't know. I guess it means that we can um, get what we need without wasting valuable resources like, as he said, time and gas and all that. Since, as we all know, gas is, prices are going up and we're using up our sources. So I think it's great that we can get what we need without using up those resources. Now, other people might hear what you have been saying and would say, well, okay, so by going to an online retailer, you know, you're not taking up time that an employee in, in a shopping mall would be able to give to you, so there's mm -hmm. less need for that employee. Uh, secondly, uh, there are, uh, there's a, an unusual tax situation for online commerce that some people are saying is unfair, and, and then more and more states are wanting to collect taxes off of it. Do these types of changes that you're growing up with, does that, does that mean anything to you at all? Yeah, I think so. Um, with the with the whole employee thing, I think uh, that it's important that that the, those jobs are available. But I also think that e-commerce is not going to totally um, over, is not going to totally overtake um, just going to the store. I don't think that regular retail will be abolished by this. I think mm -hmm. it may be slowed down, but not completely mm -hmm. abolished. So we, there may be a reduction in those number of jobs, but I don't think they'll disappear completely. Okay, we're going to take a very short break. We are very fortunate today to have the World Citizen, the 2011 World Affairs Council World Citizen uh, Essay Contest winners. Um, and uh, Kendall Barton, fifth grader from Bryan Elementary, Elena Plenifish, uh, ninth grade from Kamayakan Junior High, and Zanwar Faraj, tenth grader from Sammamish High School. Uh, I have, are talking with us today, and again, I'm very enthusiastic about the future because I know that my Social Security is going to be paid as a result of these very, very smart people. And uh, if you want more information, go to the World Affairs Council's website, world-affairs.org, and you're going to learn an awful lot about this, this essay contest. If you know someone uh, who might be ready to write an essay, be sure to, to get into the 2012 contest. Okay. Have you ever purchased anything online? Well, that you can tell about? Usually, well, usually when I want something purchased online, uh, since oftentimes they, you, sometimes you need like a credit card, usually I just say, hey, can you buy this for, for me? So, and oftentimes my parents will buy me stuff. So online is great for you? Yes. Okay, what's well, your favorite thing to get online? Well, I don't usually get stuff online very much, but um, 
So I don't, so I, so, but when I do, it's usually just like little stuff. Okay, Sanwar, portable healthcare devices. I mean, here in the Seattle area, I mean, we have some incredible uh, health related, especially global health related companies, uh, not just uh, Sonicide, but PATH, uh, Seattle Biomed, of course, University of Washington, the Global Health Alliance is huge here. Um, when you heard the description of the Sonicide and the portable healthcare device, uh, what, what was your reaction? Is that something that you would be interested in learning more about? Definitely. I think it's, um, it has a huge impact on areas where uh, healthcare equipment isn't as, av as available. Uh, I know definitely there's many places around the world, maybe in Africa uh, specifically, where they might not, might not have the equipment necessary to give that healthcare. And so when people can come in with these portable devices, uh, it would make a huge impact. You'd be able to give, uh, give them uh, the he healthcare they need in regions where uh, it might not be uh, capable of giving the large bulk equipment. Okay, now I'm going to stay with you, Zemar, for this question. Um, Kendall's company, Theo's Chocolate, is organic farming. Right. Um, does uh, buying organic, growing up with organic food, does that matter to you? Uh, definitely. I think uh, it's always good to take healthy choices. And um, when I heard about the fair uh, trade agreements with the farmers, I thought that was great because I know a lot of uh, farmers, especially in Colombia, they get scammed uh, and they their earnings are basically just taken from the producers and uh, once they have the fair trade agreements it'll help them uh, have a sustainable income so I think that's great what they're doing your chocolate. Elena, uh, organic farming, organic food, does that matter to you? Yeah I mean we buy basically all organic food except what you can't really buy organic but um, yeah I think it's really important because I don't want to eat some chemicals that are going to kill a bug. Who knows what it's going to do to me if it's going to kill <laughs> a bug. Well, that's for sure because uh, bugs are, are very resistant. But the thing of it is is that uh, in, a, in a very difficult economy right now, there people are becoming more and more price sensitive perhaps. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to one jar of peanut butter that's $3.19 and then you go over here, that, that one that is organic and it's $5.69, you know, yeah, well, I think you got to draw the line somewhere, but um, like I don't know that buying organic cereal is really important. But I think, with, especially with fruits and vegetables, it's important. And I, I don't know that it's always more expensive. I mean, I've heard that a lot, but I don't know that that's actually true. Okay, <clears throat> Kendall, let's go back to you now. Um, and the main question is: is why are you interested in anything global? Why aren't you just interested in things that happen in your neighborhood? Well. I, well, what I, one of the things that I thought that was really interesting is that these innovations kind of started out, like, near where we are, but they've, like, expanded, and now they're impacting the globe. Do you want to do something that has global impact yourself? I don't know. I, I haven't decided what I want to do when I get older. Okay, Zanwar, how about yourself? Um, is, why is, why is being interested in the globe something that's important to you? Uh, well, specifically for me, I'm not, I wasn't born in the United States. My parents are from Kurdistan, so uh, right there I have some, uh, a global perspective, and I don't want to stay in this area for the rest of my life, and I, I want to have a greater impact, and it's important to understand what's happening um, outside of your local area, understand the, the big picture. So um, I, I know this is, isn't a completely fair question, but what kind of impact do you want to have? What, what is, do you know what you want to do to make the, have the impact? Um, well, right now I'm thinking of majoring in some sort of science te technology. So if I could create some sort of uh, technology that would help others, that would that'd be huge to me. Well, there certainly is so much that's going on right, right here in the Puget Sound that does impact, as you guys have, uh, have, have all three of you have talked about, but that does impact the globe. You're in a great place to to be to start out anyway and then go and have some impact somewhere else. Elena yourself, why are you interested? Well I, I think that what happens on the global scale affects us all. I mean we are, our country is currently fighting a couple of wars um, in the globe and I think that a lot of people have uh, family members, friends in, in the service. I know my, uh, my cousin just joined the army and so I don't know exactly what his deal is but I'm sure that at some point he'll be called upon to 
do something somewhere outside the United States. So I think that what happens in, on the global level affects us all um, because, to use the cliche, the world is getting smaller, and so we're going to have to interact with all those people, and we want to uh, meet them as equals and realize that they are our equals as well. Let's talk about, uh, and let's stay with you, Elena. Let's talk about the World Affairs uh, Council's contest itself, the World Citizen Essay mm -hmm. uh, contest. How did you find out about it, and then what did you do to make it happen? Well, um, I found out about it actually in an interesting way because uh, one of the teachers at my school, his wife is affiliated with the World Affairs Council somehow. I'm not exactly sure what her position there is. But anyway, he um, gave us information about that, uh, gave it to my teacher, and he gave it to us. and that's how I found out about it, and then I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. So I, um, you know, looked around, thought about some possible topics centered on that one, and uh, wrote the essay. Mm. I mean, <laughs> that's how I made it happen. Just wrote it. Kendall, you're the young one here, and you've done really very well on the show, so we can't tell that you're a, a fifth grader or a ninth grader or whatever. But uh, what made you want to write this, and how did you go about it? Well, well, actually, the way that I actually ended up writing the essay is that my writing teacher, Mr. Garland, he had our whole writing class. We had to do a global innovation, but it could be anywhere. Although for a couple people, including me, he made us do things that were in the global, that was in the Puget Sound region. And then, like, after we were already done writing, he's like, hey, well, there's this there's this um, World Citizen Essay Contest by the World Affairs Council, and you uh, and you people who were um, writing about innovations in the Puget Sound region can enter. Okay, and so there it was. It was it was like a natural progression then from class. Well, excellent, Zanwar. How about you? I know that Sammamish High School uh, oftentimes has uh, students who enter this competition, and there you are again, and have done very well again. Right. Uh, my history teacher basically tells the students every year to. He uh, informs them about the essay contest, and when I heard about it, um, I instantly thought I'd get interested and want to do it because I'm pretty competitive. I always want to get first, so uh, it took a lot of time. Uh, probably spent a good 40 hours on it, but I think it was worth it in the end. So, wait. Because of where you come from, I want to ask some, some questions that are, are kind of different okay. uh, from, uh, from Elena and Kendall's. And, what do, what do you understand that, as someone who was born in Kurdistan, what do you understand that you are from? Well, uh, it's not an actual country, so it's kind of hard to identify myself with Kurdistan, but, uh, well, I'm going back there in about three days, and just to see my relatives, and what I think of it is just family, I think home, I think bright sun, it's just a great place for me. What it, um, okay, so with those kind of thinking, but you're going to a place that isn't a country. Um, do you want it to be a country? Definitely. My parents, they definitely want it to be a country also. Uh, it, it means a lot just to know you're from somewhere and to identify yourself in a country. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Okay, now, Elaine and Kendall, I'm going to ask you a really hard question now. I want to go 10 years in the future now. Let's, and in fact, let's go 20 years in the future. By that time, you'll be right at 30 years old. Oh my gosh, you'll be kind of like ready for the keel over. And um, can you can you you know be 20 years down the road and then look back and see where you think you're going to be and what you're going to be doing, Elena? You mean what I think I'll be doing in 30 yeah. in 20 years? Well, I'm not really sure. You know, I've been taking Spanish for the past couple of years, and I've really been liking that. So I was thinking. Um, maybe something along the lines of an interpreter or working with the State Department in, um, in the global community, uh, you know, as an ambassador to some Spanish-speaking country. Or, you know, I've thought about being a lawyer, too. I really haven't centered on anything mm -hmm. at Through this the point. Through the World Affairs Council, there are so many connections with so many organizations that probably could use someone who is a, uh, speaks Spanish. Yeah. Uh, I suspect that that's probably a good resource for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. Kendall. We're gonna. The, the burden is on you now. You're gonna. You have the tar hardest thing. Twenty years down the road. Well, I really don't know what I'm going to do when I'm like thirty. So, uh, but I, I, um, 
I used to want to be like an entomologist and like go somewhere like Africa or South America. All right, time out a minute. What is an entomologist? I'm I don't even know what that is. I'm impressed you know what that is. <laughs> what is that? That's what everybody said when I was in kindergarten. Okay, so um, <laughs> so an entomologist is someone who studies insects, and so you want to kill her bugs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find something that'll do something to the bugs, but not me. Here we are. So you may want to study bugs in a, in another country. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, very good. Now, Zenwar, would you recommend to other students at Sammamish High School and anybody else that you know to enter into this contest? I would definitely recommend it because uh, although there's not a hundred percent chance you're going to win, it's it kind of helped me uh, learn more about Amazon and whatever topic you choose. It will help you learn more about it and just a good experience. Try to uh, enter a contest be competitive. It's, it's a fun t fun experience. Kendall, how about you? Were you going to encourage other students at, uh, well, Exxon next year to enter? Yeah, I just think that it's really great that you get an opportunity to enter an essay contest where you are writing about big things um, that matter a lot, like in the whole world. Elena, yeah, at your high school, you're going to encourage them to do that as well? Yeah, I think it really just opens your eyes to the fact that there's you know, there's a world out there beyond our community, and we need to be a part of it. Okay. Well, thank you all very much for being on the show. So there you have it. Go to the World Affairs Council's website, world-affairs.org. Learn about the Citizen Essay Contest. And at the same point in time, I hope you learned something tonight. I sure did, uh, because what I learned is that uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty bullish about the future when there are students like uh, the ones that like Elena and Kendall and Zanwar. And good luck to them, and we'll see you right here next week on Public Exposure. Take care. Thank you, sir.